Hi everyone, I hope you're all having a great week. This week I'm stepping completely out of my comfort zone and I'm going to do something I've never done before, which is work on black watercolor paper. I have had this paper now since the end of last year and it's sort of been staring at me and I've been feeling very intimidated by it. <laughs> It's one of those things when you've never done something, it can be scary to try something new. So I have decided that I am going for it. I initially wondered if I should maybe not film the very first time I was doing it. And then I thought, no, I am going to film it because that's what I do. I experiment, I play, I try different things. I try new things. Sometimes they work out. Sometimes the best thing that happens is that I learn something new and I guess in many cases that's always one of the great things that happens. No matter whether my painting is a success or maybe not, doesn't have the results that I would like them to have, I always learn something. So this process specifically is going to be more about learning than anything else but I do hope I can create something that I enjoy in the process. So to keep things simple for me considering I am doing something I've never done before and I am feeling daunted by the black paper I'm going to be doing neurographic art. Neurographic art my way as I prefer to do it and I'm doing this because I am trying to offer myself some grace and compassion and understanding that when I'm doing something new, the simpler I can keep things, the better it will be for me. So one thing that I'm discovering is cool with working on black paper is that when I draw my circles using my circle guide and a simple pencil, it's very easy to see my lines on the paper because the lead from my pencil is a little bit light reflective and so it's going to be easier for me to work with this. I have to get out of the mindset of working on white paper and it it is different <laughs> to work on black paper so I'm sort of trying to work through what that's going to be like. I have an idea of what I can do and I, I, I know I'll need to work with lighter colors. I'm used to working on white paper with watercolors where you start light and you build up color values because once you apply dark values it's harder to apply lighter values on top. It just makes sense. But when you're working on black paper it's the complete opposite. So well, I don't know if it's the opposite, but it's definitely very different because the surface is dark. So colors are not going to show up as easily on dark paper as they would on white paper. So let's see what we can discover along the way. I've added water to my watercolor palette and I'm starting to dilute some of that blue that you're seeing on my palette. I know that if I apply that color on top of the black paper, not a whole lot is going to actually happen. It's a very dark background and the color is very transparent, so nothing much will happen if I only apply that color right now. So what I'm going to do is apply my tropical, I forget what it's called. Tropical Sunrise Magic Green and I'm going to mix some of it to my blue. Will it make a difference in the magic green? Maybe. I don't know. I've never done this before. So I'm trying it to see if the blue will slightly change the hue of the magic green to a more bluish tinge. It may happen. It may not happen. I'm not sure. So why not give it a try? I decided to add the magic green to the blue because I think an iridescent color will definitely show very well on this black paper. And already as I'm applying the paint on the paper, I can tell that it will have some interesting effects. 
I don't know that the blue is actually influencing the magic green a whole lot. It does seem to be a lot more green than blue on the paper. But again, it's all about experimenting and trying to figure things out as I'm going along. If uh, I do another painting like this at some point, I'd like to try adding the magic green all on its own to see if it would actually look different. And it may very well be that it would look different. But right now I'm not seeing a huge influence from the blue. I do see, you know, a little tinge of blue in there, but it is still looking more green than blue. What I do like, however, like I said, is that the, the iridescence of the magic green is really showing up well on that paper. And it's leaving, of course, it's transparent, so you're still seeing the black of the paper underneath, but when it catches the light, it creates an interesting effect and it's kind of subtle because it's transparent but it's still very beautiful so i'm liking that so far and i think i'm going to just keep working on building my background in this way since i'm experimenting with something new i'm also going to experiment with the things i'm used to using and so i've decided to add a little bit of salt i'm guessing we're probably not going to see a whole lot show through in terms of texture but even if the textures that came out were a little bit light I think it would still be interesting so why not try it After applying all the paint on my background and putting a little bit more salt, I let my paper dry and then rub the salt off the paper. You can see that a little bit of texture was left behind. Um, it's not super visible, but it is visible. So I do like the fact that I applied the salt. It did add a little bit more texture to the iridescent paint in the background. And now I'm gonna to try to start working on my circles and I'll do so using paints that are more matte. And I am guessing I'm gonna to have to add some white or some Titan buff or a, um, a light color in order for my circles to actually pop on this black background. So first things first, I'm going to start by adding some Titan buff to my palette or in this case, actually, no, sorry, I'm adding white. And the white that I'm adding is from my Mungio watercolor palette. It's not a color, up, of course, that I've worked with very much because white is not, I don't find, a very useful color to use on white watercolor paper. But in this instance, it might be exactly what I need. So I'm starting by adding some white to my palette. I don't want to just make my circles completely white, so I'll add a little bit of other watercolors into my circles once I'm done adding this color. Most watercolors don't tend to be very opaque. 
and I think this is probably because we apply them with water and so when the pigment is diluted using the water of course it makes the paint a little bit more transparent but I think that's just a normal quality of watercolor paint and it's a quality that I do appreciate quite a bit but I am noticing of course that on black paper this white even though it looks relatively bright right now is still not necessarily as bright as if I was applying something that was more opaque like maybe a gouache or gesso but that's fine because the intent here is not for me to paint this circle completely white I want to use some blue pigment and I'm going to change the color of my circles I want to have somewhat of a monochromatic well not really monochromatic maybe dichromatic um, painting so I'm going to be working mostly with the blues maybe a little bit more white as I go along and at some point maybe I'll add some green or gold or something like that but right now I'm focusing on just trying to see if I can build my circles over this black paper and make them pop from the paper because it is a little bit more challenging to do so on a dark surface. So let's see what happens. This time instead of adding the white on the paper first and then coming in to add some blue, I decided to add some blue pigment to the white paint that I had on my palette to see how that would apply on top of the black paper. And it does look a little bit more dark, um, but I'm just going to go with it and we'll see what it looks like after it dries. One color in my palette that is generally very pigmented and relatively opaque is the cobalt blue turquoise light that I bought from Kramer Pigments. It's a paint that I, I use quite a bit. I fell in love with it as soon as I received it. <laughs> I've used it a lot in a lot of paintings and I think one of the things I love so much about it is the fact that it is highly pigmented it's pretty opaque and so when I apply it I don't have to worry too too much about losing that color intensity and uh, I really love it and as you can see I'm applying it directly over top the black paper and it's still pretty bright even though it's being applied on top of a dark surface so I'm really liking that and I think it's a good color choice for that black paper. You can't see it because this little Mungio paint pan set um, that I'm currently getting the white from is off camera but that's simply what I'm doing is I'm just going into that pan set and I'm getting some white and I'm adding it to that turquoise blue that I just added to see if I can keep the colors light to also create some interesting textures in that circle and um, just to, to add a little blend of color the white should show very well on the black paper especially since it's mixed with this opaque turquoise blue so we'll see but I do like how it's uh, currently showing up on my paper
This entire painting process is an intuitive experimentation. I am just trying new things, trying to apply the paint differently in different areas so that I can learn how to work with this black paper and start feeling less intimidated by it. So for this circle here, I went in directly into my paint pan of the turquoise, the cobalt blue turquoise light. And as I've mentioned before, it's a pretty opaque paint. And instead of diluting it with a lot of water, I used a lot of pigment and I added it directly on the paper to see how much more colored that circle would look. And right now the paper is still wet. So of course it looks a little bit brighter than it will certainly look once it's dry. But I'm guessing because it's less diluted, it's probably not going to change a whole, whole lot. So my background is now completely dry and I'm now going to start working on adding some white to my circles because this I think will be the color that will pop the most. Black might also look nice only because there is color all over the surface of the paper now and because there's iridescent paint on the paper the black might still do something but I think that white would definitely have a much more pronounced effect so I'm coming in with some white. You'll notice that I'm working with a Posca paint pen and I do love my Posca paint pens. I love working with them especially on acrylic paints and canvases. Watercolor paper and this paper in particular can be much rougher of a surface to work with these markers on and since my Posca paint pens have a felt tip it's usually not the best marker to work on a rough surface. Since I was starting to feel like my my paint pen was struggling a little bit with adding color because I could feel the fibers of the felt tip starting to break I decided to pull out my white Signa pen and that generally does work relatively well um, on most watercolor paint surfaces because it's got a metal tip and it, it, it does do a pretty good job of applying pigment on the paper. I'll use the same white pen to start adding some lines so that I can work on creating my neurographic art. Now that my lines are added, I'm going to start looking for all the areas in the painting where the lines intersect and create sharp corners and I'm going to start rounding those corners off. 
And that's sort of my way of creating your graphic art is I, I really only borrow, mostly only borrow this part of the practice because it, I find it very simple and I enjoy the process of making those areas rounder. <laughs> it, it's uh, supposed to be scientifically proven that the process of doing so is therapeutic. And I for one can vouch that for me anyway, it is therapeutic because when I'm doing this, I feel very relaxed. And so I love to work with neurographic art and when I'm stressed or if I'm feeling anxious about something or if I just feel like I need to do something fun and carefree and not put too, too much thought into what I'm doing, but just be uh, focused on the creative moment and bringing myself back into the present moment just to create and be, then I often turn to neurographic art. My white pen, this is the first time of course that I'm working over black paper and I, I usually love working with this white pen in particular, it's pretty good, um, but it's not covering the surface nearly as well as for instance my black fountain pen would be covering the paper when I'm working with that. So. I'll, I can fix this, I, I, you know, do I have to fix it? Probably not, no, this is an experiment, but I'm, I'm experimenting and I'm trying different things and I'm trying to see how I can work in a different way. And so I want to see how I can use this pen or white in this case to cover the black paper and have more of an impact. And I find that if I apply the white pen like I'm doing right now, it's leaving a little a bit of a streaky texture and you can see a little bit of the black of the paper sort of poking through and I'm not really crazy about that um, but for now it's it's doing what I want it to do and what I'll, I'll do after is I'll come over all of this with some white gesso or some white gouache and I can just simply cover that up it's not a, a huge deal. Now one drawback of working with this pen in particular especially over areas of a painting where there's a lot of pigment on the paper, the white pen really struggles. And I think it's just normal because there's a lot of pigment on the paper and so any ink being applied is, is gonna be a little bit more of a challenge because the it's not as porous or you're, you're not getting into contact with it as much of the paper as you were when you were applying the ink over a surface that didn't have as much pigment. So you can see that here that the pen is not covering quite as well. So for areas like that, especially for that circle where I know I have a lot of pigment, I'll come back in with my gesso and I'll cover that area. And with the gesso, it'll cover very, very well. And, uh, have a more opaque application of the white. Already I can see that the gesso is going to do a much better job of covering, covering those areas where there is a lot more paint pigment.
Now I'm ready to move on to another part of my process. I've pulled out this pen that I got not too long ago. It's a fountain pen that I filled with some white ink and it's my first time using it. I am not uber familiar with this pen or with the ink I'm using so I'm kind of testing it out. <laughs> this really, this paint, this whole entire painting really is uh, a huge experiment I guess but it's good for us to do these kinds of things. It's good for us to to play with a variety of tools, to try different products, to try doing new things. And it can be really daunting. Um, I, like I said, I've had this paper for quite some time and this is the first time I'm pulling it out to, to play with it. And I'm also playing with this pen that I bought a little while ago uh, also but had never dared to fill and it's called a Twisby. Um, so far really working with it I am actually really loving how well it's applying the ink to the paper and since it's a fountain pen and has a metal tip it will work really well on this rough surface of the watercolor paper. So I'm kind of excited to be playing with this new art supply and I'm looking forward to using it some more because right now I'm really impressed with how well the ink is flowing out of the paint tube or the, not, sorry, not the paint tube, but the uh, fountain pen nib. And I, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. So I tend to use a lot of white ink and this is probably gonna prove to be um, a tool I use a lot moving forward. As I've mentioned on many occasions in my videos, my process is a very intuitive one and so that means that I don't necessarily have a set plan before I get going. I try to push myself to get the process going and as I go along, I figure out what I'm going to do next. And so I started by adding those um, white dots around this circle and I really liked the effect of that and I wanted to make the interior of the circle pop a little bit more so I decided to come in with my black Posca paint pen and add a little bit of stippling inside the inner ridge of the circle and I do find that as I'm adding it it is making that circle pop a little bit more because it's contrasting that this this white the white stippling is contrasting against the black stippling and so that is adding an, a little element of pop in this painting one of the challenges that I find anyway working on black paper is that the surface is so dark that it's hard to find ways without just working with plain white to make different aspects of the painting pop and so using the black in this instance right against the white and next to this color is helping to do that I think. Since I'm already working with my black Posca paint pen and I have a few white circles in my painting I know adding white around white though it may look it may look nice. I don't think it would have a huge, huge impact because white on white, of course, is not hugely visible <laughs> unless there are different opacities of white. But in this case, I thought I'd experiment and use my black ink and or paint in this case because it's a, a paint pen and see if I can make those white circles pop a little bit more against the black surface that's covered with iridescent paint by just simply using some black stippling. The effect of course is very subtle but I do like it. 
it um, yeah there's something about using that black paint over the iridescent paint that does seem to make these little white circles pop a little bit more I'm going to work on creating some more stippling using my new white fountain pen. And as I move the camera closer, I thought it was also an interesting chance for us to have a look at some of the texture that was left by the salt that I added over the paint. You'll notice that, of course, the paint that dried over the black surface is still relatively dark, but you can see some texture has been left by the salt, and I do like that. Even though it's very subtle, I think it is quite nice, and so I'm glad I did that. And I think adding this stippling is going to be a lot of work. <laughs> well, I don't really look at it as work. When I'm doing it, honestly, for me, stippling is very relaxing. But there's going to be quite a bit of stippling to be done on this painting, and so I'll show you some of it, but I won't make you sit through the whole of it, because it'll be quite a long process. Yet still I think a very worthwhile process to do because I think it'll be impactful. It'll look, that white stippling will look quite nice over the dark surface of the paper.
I really like the light, airy, almost wispy feeling of my white lines with the stippling on the paper, but I almost feel like it's a little bit too much white, and so I've decided to come in now with my black Posca paint, paint pen again, and I'm gonna add some black dots to the middle of my white lines. When I first started adding these little dark, um, circles or you know little pointed um, like dots I guess dots is a really good way to call what I'm doing right now <laughs> oh my god sometimes my menopause brain mm. um, yeah I wasn't really sure that it was a good thing for me to to do this I kind of looked at the dots that I was creating and I I thought they could make sense, but then I wasn't sure I, I was liking it as I was applying it. So I, I guess I could have stopped and just covered that area relatively quickly with some more white gesso or white paint. But I thought, you know what? I felt an intuition to do this. So I'm just gonna go with it and see how I feel about it in the end. And like I said before, this piece is experimental. I am doing something I have never done before, which is work on black paper. And so I am releasing myself from the pressure of having to create the most wonderful work of art. <laughs> this is not the point of this process. The point of this process is to do something new, to try some new things and to learn along the way. And when I give myself permission to do that, I find that I develop way more as an artist than when I pressure myself to always be creating something that is aesthetically pleasing to the eye. And you know what? Even though I wasn't so sure about putting in those black dots when I first started adding them, as I continued to work, they really started to grow on me. And I think adding them created not only some more visual interest to that area, but it did make that white push back into the background a little bit more. And I think that was better. I, I like that better rather, rather than having those white lines kind of like in your face you know they were so bright and they were beautiful I do like the white with the stippling around it it almost gives an impression that the lines are, are breaking or um, dissolving I guess as they're traveling in my little neurographic artwork um, adding the black within the lines also gets to I guess make that effect look even more apparent if you will. So I'm liking it. I'm liking it and I'm glad I committed to it and uh, I will not cover those white, those black dots with more white. <laughs> I will resist because I, I like what is happening right now. So I'm going to surprise and maybe shock some of you by stating that I have decided not to add any gold to my painting. <laughs> I have looked at my painting and I feel like there's enough going on in the painting right now. And on top of that, having the iridescent magic green on the background, I think is enough. I don't think I need to add anything else. And I really like the composition of the painting as it is. So I'm just gonna leave it and I'll add gold paint or my star gold to another painting on in a later video. Let's move in a little bit closer to see how the paint managed to show up on the dark surface of that black paper. I do find that there are some very redeeming qualities to elements of this painting. I will be very honest, however, I don't think this is one of my favorite paintings I've ever created. But what I do like is that I challenged myself to try something new and I learned a lot in the process. I also really like the look of iridescent paints on top of this black paper, so I will definitely be doing that again. How are you going to challenge yourself in your next creative project? 
I had fun learning in my creative process and I really hope you enjoyed watching this video and learning with me. Thank you for making the time to join me. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating!